And I was thinking yesterday after the evening service. Jag tänkte igår efter kvällsmöte. You know that some people say to you you should hang around people that have come a bit further than you. Ja, <laughs> och att jag sagt att du borde hänga lite med folk som har kommit längre än dig själv. And I think this weekend for us as a church. Jag tror att den helgen för oss som menighet has been to hang around somebody that can take us further. Har varit att hänga samman med någon som kan ta oss lite längre. And challenge us as a church. Och som kan utmana oss som menighet. And I think that's been very precious and very special for us. Och det har varit väldigt värdefullt och väldigt speciellt för oss. I'll take this in Norwegian så. So. Är det okej? Okay? Ja. ja. Vi har ju haft ganska många konferenser upp igenom. Ehm um, Och så, så har jag haft privilegier att kunna få vara ute sammen med med de som är er talare och ofta så är er det slik att de älskar och prata på scenen men när du kommer sammen to och to och är er på restauranger och visar dem lite runt så 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 är er det så vitt du får ett ord ut av dem. Jag har det privilegiet att jag har varit lite sammen med Robbie i Forrige helg i Kristiansand, og så har jeg også tilbrakt en del tid her i byen. Vi har varit på Frognepark i Akebrygge og Grynneløkka og ja, hengt litt sammen. Jeg kan fortelle dere en, da en hemmelighet, og kanskje ikke så väldigt stor oppenbaring. Det er nesten ikke noe forskjell fra det han presenterer sig som her på scenen, som det som han gör der ute. <laughs> Så jag känner att det har varit otroligt berikande för mig personligen men också för kirken och har Robbie här. Och vi ger dem alla sammen en bok om Norge. Vi har fått ta det med på någon få städer här i Oslo. Men vi önskar att vi ska få se hur rikt land vi har, så att vi kan ge dem en liten fristelse till att komma tillbaka. Så vi önskar dem hjärtlig välkommen tillbaka hela gängen och hoppas att det blir för allt för länge till. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Mike. Where are you, Mike? Come, come, come. Mike at the center. I just want to pray for you guys. Yes, please. Jeg jag tar det på engelska. <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> Thank you God. <laughs> Thank you for the joy of having Robbie here, Father. Tack för glädjen att ha Robbie här. And I just pray that you will strengthen and refresh him right now that you will fill him up. That you will let him speak what's on your heart to us today. Att han ska tala det som är på ditt hjärta för oss idag. So just refresh him and give him your heart for us. Vi ska nog ge han ditt hjärta för oss som är menet. Come and speak to us Father. Kom och tal till oss här. We just open up our heart for you. Vi öppnar bara hjärtan våra för dig. And I just pray that Robbie and Pe Christian will flow together and that it will be a joy for them. Jag ber om att Robbie och Pe Christian kan flyta samman och att det ska vara en glädje för dem. Just to tell us what you want to say to us. Och bara fortälla det som du har att säga till oss. So just bless him and his family. And as he goes out of this country, just refresh him and give him a good time in the States. And I just pray for a time that he could spend with his family. And we just release finances over the work. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Jag har bara lust att si säga tusen tusen hjärtligt tack för offer igår. Det kom in 21615 kronor till Robbys arbete. Så tusen hjärtligt tack för alla det som var med och gav. Ja, I want to especially just thank you for your gracious generosity. Ja, jag är en tacke för er generositet. I assure you that we'll, uh, we'll keep that in use for uh, continuing to spread this and to uh, encourage other churches and other places. Jag kan försäkra dem att vi ska bruka det gott för att fortsätta uppmuntra andra menigheter på andra ställen. Uh it's 
you know, I, I had heard several people talk about uh, Norwegian people kind of being a little bit icy and a little bit colder. Jeg har hørt folk før tidligere snakke om at nordmenn er litt kalde. So I don't know what you people did to all those people. Jeg vet ikke hva dere har gjort med alle disse folka. I don't know if you killed them all off. Jeg vet ikke om dere har drept alle de som var kalde their place, og tok deres plass. I haven't found any icy cold people here. Jeg, aldri, jeg har ikke møtt noen kalde mennesker her i det hele tatt. Everybody's been very gracious and very hospitable. Alle har really vært veldig eh generøse og og gjestfrie og jeg setter veldig stor pris på det. You know, people people don't realize how that traveling so much can it, it can actually get very lonely. Det kan være, egentlig være ganske ensomt å reise så mye. And people, you know, think, oh, well, so many people know you, so many people, you know, all this, but there's actually a real loneliness that's to it. Og folk tenker at, åh, det er så mange som kjenner deg og sånn, men det er ganske mye ensomhet der også. And so when you come someplace and there's a lot of warmth and a lot of uh, hospitality, it really makes it, uh, makes it uh, feel so much better and so much uh, more peaceful. Så når, når du kommer til et sted hvor du kjenner varme og, uh, og gjestfrihet, så kjenner du så mye mer fred. And so I want to thank you for that too. Så jeg takker dere for det. Really appreciate that. Jeg setter stor pris på det. Really quick before we get into this. Før vi starter. Message uh, for those of you who weren't here, we do have uh, some resources back there. Det er dere som ikke har vært på konferansen, uh, så vi har noen ressurser bak på uh, bak i salen. We call that a power tool table. Vi kaller det en kraftverktøysbord because I'm a guy. For jeg er mann. Power <laughs> vi, vi liker å kalle det sånn kraftverktøy. That's just what we guys have to do. Det liker vi uh, gutter. But I'll go through this really quick. Jeg skal gå kjapt gjennom det. Uh, I've got a six DVD set back there. Jeg har en DVD set med seks DVD'er. Called Empowered Evangelism. Som kalles uh, kraft evangelisering. But this is not just about evangelism. Det er ikke bare om evangelisering. But it's about taking uh, all the gifts of the spirit and how to do them outside of the church. Men det handler om å ta alle åndens gaver og ta dem ut av menigheten. Prophetic healing deliverance. Det er faktisk uh, helbredelse, utfrielse. Ministering God's manifest presence. Og bare uh, vise Guds uh, manifesterte tilstedeværelse. It's about eight hours of teaching. Cirka åtte timer med undervisning. And then also I mentioned last night that I did a conference at the Columbus Vineyard. Og så nevnte jeg også i går at jeg hadde en konferanse på Columbus Vineyard. And it was called the Come Holy Spirit Conference. Kom Helligånden konferansen. We had about 3,000 people in attendance at that one. Det var en stor konferanse med 3,000 mennesker. And uh, we have these uh, back there as well. Vi har også de til salgs der bak. And if you have young people, if you have like teenagers Og hvis dere har tenåringer her, eller unge. Um, I did a, a uh, two-part teaching. This was again at the Columbus Vineyard. Så hadde jeg en undervisningsrekke i uh, Columbus Vineyard også. But it was, it was entitled, Can God Use Me to Do Miracles Today? Som het, Kan Gud bruke meg til å gjøre mirakler i dag? And these are just kind of inspiring teachings of encouraging people to go out and to, you know, do the stuff. Og det er inspirasjon og undervisning om å gå ut og gjøre sakene. And then uh, one more is I did a teaching called Being Available for God to Use. Så hadde jeg også en undervisning som heter uh, Være tilgjengelig for at Gud kan bruke deg. And this has probably been one of my most popular single CD teachings. Så dette er kanskje den mest populære en CDs undervisning som jeg har. And it's a really powerful message about preparing your life for God to use you more. Det er et veldig kraftfullt budskap om å forberede livet ditt sånn at Gud kan bruke deg mer. Um, I'm going, there's Mike, okay. Uh, I have to catch a flight. Jeg må nå et fly. I have to be out the door by like 6.15. Jeg må gå ut av døren herfra kvart over 6. So we're going to move pretty quickly here. Så vi skal være litt kjappe. And that, just to let you know, that that's going to be packed up and gone. Vi pakker også alle utstyret som er til salg rett etterpå. So if you want something, don't delay. Så hvis du vil ha noe, så ikke vær for sein. I want to start off though, if I could, doing some prophetic ministry. Sharing some prophetic ministry. Jeg vil gjerne starte med litt profetisk tjeneste. Is that okay? Is that great? Um, would that be all right? No? Okay. okay. Let's nei, go nei, on. Okay, da, så. <laughs> I heard no like five times. I heard times. noen si, uh, si, si nei. Uh, but I just, you know, I wanted to share some more, uh, just uh, some prophetic words. Uh, just, for, uh, just for some of you guys. Just encourage you guys. Okay? Um, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your spirit. Father, we thank you for your name. And we just thank you for your presence. We thank you for your name. And Lord, just direct in this meeting. Bare dir dirigere oss i dette møtet. Let your, let your spirit just lead and guide. La den, din ånd bare lede oss og føre oss. And Lord, just let everything be done to your glory and for your honor. Og la alt skje til din ære og til din herlighet. We thank you, Father. Vi takker deg, Far. In Jesus' name. I Jesu navn.
Amen. Amen. Um, whenever I do ministry, one of the things I want everybody to realize is anything I'm doing, I'm trying to model and say, this is something you can do too. And so I don't want you to see it as, oh, he's just got a special gift. Any people that are specially gifted are in the church to equip the church in that gifting. They're not just there to just function in that gift. But, but they're there to, to equip the church and to give it away. And that's what you know Ephesians is talking about when it talks about pastors, teachers, all of those things. I'm not impressed with prophets who just come and prophesy. If they don't teach people how to do it, to me they're not doing their job. And, and I think that's really important in what we see in scripture. And so anyway, that's what this past two days were about. But uh, I just want to, you know, really encourage you with that. Okay. Uh, but I want to share with you, uh, you can turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 5. Men det kan gå i Lukas 5. And how many of you grew up in church? Hvor mange av dere har vokst opp i kirke? You grew up in church. Um, you know, here's the thing, is that we sort of always think that Jesus always knew what was going to happen next and that he was just always, you know, sort of operating from this prophetic, you know, side of knowing what was going to take place next. Vi tror ofte at Jesus alltid visste hva som skulle skje hele tiden, og at han hele tiden var et profetisk og alltid visste hva som lå rundt neste hjørne. And we always think that, you know, Jesus was always telling his disciples, look, this is what's going to happen next, this, 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 and this. Og at Jesus bare kunne fortelle hele tiden disiplene, dette kommer til å skje, så kommer det til å skje, så kommer det til å skje. And we have this idea that Jesus had this immense advantage of information that we don't have. Og vi tenker at Jesus hadde disse store fordelene til å vite ting i forhøkkene som vi ikke har. Now the Bible says that Jesus left all of his superhero God powers in heaven. Men Jesus sier at, nei, Bibelen sier at Jesus la igjen alle disse superheltkreftene som han hadde når han var til i himmelen. That's my wording. Det er min oversettelse. Now you have to understand, I pastor in a poor urban church. Men jeg er pastor i en fattig bydel. Så jeg kan si ting litt annerledes enn deres pastor ville si det. Jeg kanskje litt annerledes enn deres pastor ville si det. De er kanskje litt mer sofistikerte og skarpe. Det er denne siden. Jeg er kanskje på den andre siden. Så du må gi meg litt nåde for å bruke litt sånn gatenspråk. Because that's that's how I have to relate to my church. That's when I relate to my minutes. So you know, we sort of think that Jesus, you know, had this immense advantage, you know, that we don't have. So we think again that Jesus had these advantages that we didn't have. But the Bible says that he came just like a normal human being. Men Bibelen sier at han kom akkurat som en normal menneske. And that the power that he drew off, drew off of was the power of the Holy Spirit. Og at den kraften som han tok av, det var kraften fra den hellige ånd. And so because of that, I don't think Jesus had any greater advantage than we have. Og det er derfor så tror jeg at Jesus hadde ingen større fordel enn vi har. Because I think he was coming to show us how we, you know, the empowerment that he was giving us to live with. For jeg tror at han kom for å vise oss den kraften som vi kan leve med. And so we sort of think that Jesus started off every day. Vi tenker at Jesus startet hver dag. You know, where he was like, all right, boys, wake up. Og han bare sa liksom, ok, kom igjen, gutter, våkn opp. I just got the download from the father. Jeg har fått den siste oppdateringen fra far. Today we're going to head to Capernaum. I dag går vi til Capernaum. On our way to Capernaum. Til på vei til Capernaum. I'm going to heal 463 people. Så skal jeg helbrede 463 mennesker. I'm going to raise two dead people. Skal jeg løfte to mennesker fra døde. I'm going to multiply a little bit of food. Og så skal jeg multiplisere litt mat. It's going to be amazing. Det blir veldig bra. By about noon time, 
cirka klockan 12. We're going to be in Samaria. Så är vi i Samaria. I'm going to be hot, tired, hungry and thirsty. Då kommer jag att vara varm och trött och 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 tjock. So I'm going to pull over by this well. Och då kommer jag att stoppa vid en brunn. And I'm going to send you guys into town to go get some food. Och så kommer jag att sända er in i byn för att hämta mat. While I'm there there's a woman with a really bad reputation that's going to come up to me. Och men sedan så kommer det att komma en dam med väldigt dåligt rykte. I'm going to say would you give me a drink of water? Och så kommer jag att spela en om vatten. She's going to go you're a Jew I'm Samaritan you should even be talking to me. Du är jude jag är samaritan du blir inte snakt med mig. And I'm going to say, listen, I've got water that you don't know of. Also kommer jag att säga, jag har vatten som du inte vet om. And you know, it's going to be this amazing discussion. Det blir en väldigt bra diskussion. She's going to believe in me. Hon kommer att tro på mig. The whole village is going to believe in me. Hela byn kommer att tro på mig. You guys are going to come back and say, kom tillbaka. You know, why are you talking to her? She's a Samaritan. You're a Jew. Och det är kommer att spela. Varför snakkar du med mig? And I'm going to say, we've already been through all that. Och det är samaritan. Let's just eat and move on. Så jag kommer att bara säga, det är låt spisa. And then we'll go to Capernaum. And then we'll go to Capernaum. Also go to the Capernaum. Now we sort of think that that's how things happen. But we true can't shut that some things said. But I don't think that that's the way it was. Men jag tror inte det var så det var. Now a lot of the reason why we think that. Många grunder att vi tror det. Is because most of us grew up hearing the Bible stories. Är att de flesta av oss vi vuxit upp och hört de biblistorna. And we've heard them and we've seen them over and over again. Och vi har hört dem och sett dem om och om igen. Do you guys know what flannel graph is? Vet du vad flannel graph är? Anybody remember flannel graph? Är någon som husker flannel graph? You know the blue screens? Den här blåa skärmen. With the cheesy cartoon characters, the really. Men det är en gammaldags bilder. You know of the Bible stories. Tegningar med biblistorier. Well, see, we've seen flannel graph. Vi har sett flannel graph. And so we think, you know, well, we know what's going to happen next. Och så tänker vi att, ja, vi vet ju vad som kommer att ske nästa. Ja. In the church that my parents pastored, we didn't have nice flannel graphs. So how did they get some fine flannel graphs? We always had like second-hand flannel graphs, hand-me-down flannel graphs. So the only way we got flannel graphs is when a church was getting rid of theirs to buy new ones. And then on the man that sold the sin for a change. And so they would give us their old flannel graphs. That God did give us the old. I grew up always thinking Peter was an amputee. Jag trodde hela tiden att Peter hade amputerat nå. Because somebody had ripped Peter's leg off. För någon hade revet av Peters fot. And I was like, I don't get it. Jesus can raise the dead, but he can't give Peter a new leg. Var var det helt med att han är sjuk men men inte en ny ben till Peter? You know what the new flannel graph is? Det var den nyaste flannelografen här. Veggie tales. You have veggie tales? Veggie tales. Heard of veggie tales? Har du hört om dem? All right, maybe not. Anyway, the little cartoon reenactments of Bible stories. Som är med biblisk. And all of those things have made us think that you know that these guys had an advantage we don't have. All of these things that you are, perhaps, we think that they had a fordel that we don't have. Now, with that in mind, I love reading scripture. Jag liker att läsa skriften. Like it was in the moment. Som om det skedde där och då. Like you don't know what's going to happen next. Som om du inte vet vad som kommer att ske nästa. And like they didn't know what was going to happen next. För de visste inte vad som skulle komma att ske. Now. I, I'm going to read you this passage. I'm going to read you this passage. But I want you to remember something. But I want you to remember something. How many? How many of you know Luke is a man? How many of you know that Luke is a man? Okay, he's a man. Yeah, I know that. He's a man. Now, how many of you ladies know that men skip details? How many of you know that men often skip over details? I'll be gone on a you know three week trip out of the country. I'm going to be three weeks to reach out to the land. My wife picks me up in the air at the airport. Kona mig hente mig på flyplassen. She'll like tell me about your trip. Så hun fortæller mig sig mig fortæller mig om reisen. Fifteen minutes. What happened over three weeks? På femten minutter så kan jeg fortælle dig alt som skete på tre uger. Why? Because men skip details. Fordi mænd gerne hopper over detaljer. Luke is a man. Lukas var en mann. The other thing is that he's writing this like 75, 80 years later too. Ja, han vet at han skriver det kanskje 75 til 80 år etterpå. But it matches with the other Gospels of the story, so we know it's accurate. Men vi har jo de andre historiene fra evangeliet, så vi vet at det er det riktige. So let me read you the text, and then I want to fill in the blanks. Så la meg lese teksten, så skal jeg fylle inn det som ikke står der. Verse 1. Vers 1. It says, One day Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. En gang sto Jesus ved Genereset-sjøen. Great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. Og folk trengte seg inn på ham for å høre Guds ord. I'll do it verse by verse. Ok. He noticed... Two empty boats sitting at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Derfor gikk han se to båter som lå ved stranden. Fiskerne hadde gått ut av dem og holdt på å skylle i garn. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push out into the water. So he sat in the boat, and he taught the crowds from there. Jesus steg opp i en av båtene, den som tilhørte Simon, og ba om å legge litt ut fra land. Så satte han seg og underviste folkemengdene fra båten. 
When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now let's go out where it's deeper, and let's let down your nets and catch some fish. Da han var ferdig med talet, sa han til Simon, Legg ut på dypet og sett garn til fangst. Now, it says that he goes to the water's edge and people press on him to hear the word of God. Det står det at han gikk til vannet og at folk presset på for å høre Guds ord. That happens to Heidi every time she goes to the grocery store. Det skjer med Heidi hver gang hun er i butikken. She's in the vegetable aisle and people just press on her. Hun er liksom at hun skal ha grønnsaker så kommer bare folk presse på henne. So Jesus, now let me let me retell this the way that I think it could have happened. Så la meg refortelle dette sånn som jeg tror det skjedde. Now Jesus is is speaking to a crowd. Jeg så taler til en folkemengde. And he's got to get some distance from his crowd. Og han må få litt distanse fra folk. Because he doesn't have a sound system. For han har ikke noe lydsystem. And they're pressing in. Og de presser på. So he looks over. Og han ser over. And he sees these boats there. Og han ser disse båtene. Now how many fish had Peter and his crew caught by what we know of the rest of the text? Dere som kjenner historien, hvor mange fisk hadde Peter tatt denne natta? None. Ingen. They had caught no fish. De hadde ikke fått noe fisk. Now how many of you know any fishermen? Hvor mange av dere kjenner noen fiskere? Come on, this is Norway. You know, and, and how many of you know fishermen without fish are really grumpy and can even be mean? So Peter's over there, he's cleaning his nets. And I imagine it looks something like this. He's like, Get those nets clean! Kom igjen, få vasket i deg i garnene. Look at all this trash in these nets! Se på alt det søppelet vi har i garnene. Is that another bicycle tire? Er det enda et bil? Get that out of there! Et sykkeldekk? Is that a tennis shoe? Er det en lommetørkle? Tissue? Tissue? Tennis shoe. Tennis shoe? Wow. Tennis sko. You gotta amp it up a little bit more. Tissue. Tennis shoe. How did I know that? I don't know. That must have been prophetic somehow. I have no idea. He's like, get that tennis shoe out of there! Få den tennis skoen ut av der. I can't believe this! Jeg kan ikke forstå det her. You're being really quiet. We haven't caught... We haven't caught any fish! Vi har ikke fått noe fisk. We've been fishing all night long! Vi har fisket hele natta. And we've got no fish! Og vi har ingen fisk. I gotta go home to my wife! Jeg må gå hjem til kona. She's gonna say, where's the money? Where's the fish? Hun kommer til å spørre, hvor er pengene for som dere har fått noe fisk? I'm gonna say, we don't have any money, we don't have any fish! Og så må jeg si, jeg har ikke noe penger, vi har ikke noe fisk. And my mother-in-law lives with us! Og min svigemor bor jo sammen med oss. She's gonna say, I told you you should have married Barnabas. He's an accountant. He brought home money. Hun kommer til å si, jeg sa jo det at du burde gifte deg med Barnabas. Han er jo regnskapsfører. Han har penger. Jeg hater denne jobben. I hate these boats. I hate these nets. Jeg hater disse garna. Now, I know that none of this says that. Det står ingenting av det i skriften. Luke is a man. Men Lukas er en mann. And he's probably forgot some details. Han har sannsynligvis glemt noen detaljer. Now about that time, Jesus comes walking up. På den tiden så kommer da Jesus. And says, hey Peter. Og sier han, hei Peter. Would you lend me your boat? Kan jeg få låne båten din? I imagine Peter looks at him and says. Jeg kan tenke meg at Peter bare sier til han. You can have the stupid boat. Du kan få den dumme båten. I hate that boat, I hate these nets. Jeg hater den båten, jeg hater de garnene. If I could sell this boat on eBay for five bucks, I would do it. Hvis jeg kunne solgt denne båten for eBay for fem dollar, så hadde jeg gjort det en gang. Please take the boat. Bare ta båten. Before I chop it up and sell it as firewood. Før jeg hugger den opp og selger den som. Yes, have the boat. Bare ta båten. And Jesus is like, okay, okay. Okay, sier Jesus. So he climbs in the boat. Så han går inn i båten. He's, he's, he finishes teaching. Han blir ferdig med undervisningen. Just at the time. Bare på det tidspunkt. When Peter and his crew get Akkurat. the nets perfectly clean. Akkurat når de er ferdig med å rense garnene. Jesus turns and looks at Peter. Så snur Jesus seg og ser på Peter. And he's like, hey Peter. Hei Peter. I've got an idea. Jeg har en idé. Let's go fishing. La oss gå fiske. Can you believe this? Kan du tro det? I think Peter looks at him and goes, You're not from around here, are you? This is the Middle East. When the sun's out, do you see that yellow disk in the sky? When that's out, all the fish go low. There are no fish out there to catch. You need to go build an armoire or something. You know nothing about catching fish. You need to build a what? An armoire. I don't even know what that is. A dresser. <laughs> okay. 
Du er tydeligvis, du burde heller bygge et skap i stedet for å drive å fiske. Åh, det er så mye fun. And so then, but Peter turns and he says to him, Peter snur seg og sier til ham, something very powerful. Noe veldig kraftig. He says, but, men, because you say so, men siden du sier det, we will. Så sier det. Now, can you imagine Peter trying to talk his crew back into the boat? Kan du tenke deg at Peter forsøkte å overvise mannskapet sitt? He's going, come on, guys. Og sier bare, folkes. Please, let's go. Kom igjen, vi stikker ut. They're like, Peter, the nets are clean! Og de sier, Peter, Peter, vi har akkurat vasket garna. We've been doing this all night! Vi har fisket hele natta. We're tired, we want to go sleep! Vi er slitne, vi vil sove. And he's like, oh, just come on, come go with me. Men han sier bare, kom igjen, la det bli med ut. Peter, you've lost your mind. Peter, are you being gal? You're listening to this carpenter teacher. Hører du på den her snekkeren? No, let's go home. Let's sleep. Vi skal gå hjem og sove. And then Peter looks at him. Come on, guys. No, let's just go. Ja, men han siger lidt som Peter, kom igen. Maybe he'll give us a tip or something. Kan han give os tips? And so he talks him back into the boat. Så han overtaler dem ind i båten igen. And then imagine all of Peter's other fishermen friends. Og så tænk dig alle de andre fiskerne, som er på stranden. They're going, hey Peter. Og de siger bare, hey, hey Peter. Where are you going? Hvor skal du hen? Fishing. Jeg skal fiske. Peter, you think there's fish out there? Peter, tror du der er fisk der ute? No. Nej. No, I don't. Jeg tror ikke det. And where are you going? Hvorfor går du da? Have you lost your mind? Har du blitt gal? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I think I have. Yeah, I think we have been gone. Peter, don't listen to him. Peter, he gets through. He doesn't know about fishing. He doesn't know anything about fishing. And they're like, "Hey, crazy Peter's going back out." I also see that. Hey, see what that guy, the Peter, is on the way out to fish again. Peter's rowing out. Peter rows out. This is so embarrassing. This is so flat. I can't believe it. I threw it on the. And so finally, they get out in the middle of the water. So they're just like, "Meet up to the water." And Peter's like, "Okay." Og Jesus, og Peter sier, ok. You obviously don't know what fishing looks like. Du aner tydeligvis ingenting om fisking. And so you just want to see what we do. Så du har bare lyst til å se hva vi driver med. So here's what we do. We take the net. Så her er det vi driver med. Vi tar garnet. And we drop it over the side of the boat. Og vi slipper det over siden på båten. And we wait for fish. Så venter vi på fisk. That are not there. Som ikke er der. Because they're all at the bottom. For de er nede på bunnen. But if you want to see what it looks like, this is what it looks like. Men hvis du vil se hvordan det ser ut, så sånn ser det ut. And then Jesus goes. So say Jesus. Peter. Peter. I know what's wrong. Yeah, we have some fail. You see, you have your net on the wrong side of the boat. You see that? You have garnet on the wrong side of the boat. If you simply pull your net up and put it on the other side. If you just take the garnet up and put it on the other side of the boat. You catch fish. So come on, let's catch fish. They're on the other side. They're on the other side of the boat. Peter's like. Really? Peter bare, hva? Really? Mener du det? Let me get this straight. La meg forsøke å forklare det til deg. You think six, eight feet over? Du tror at kanskje halvannen meter på andre siden? There are fish right under the brim of the water. Så er det liksom fisk som er rett under overflaten. And they're down there going... Og de er der bare... They don't know we're over here. De vet ikke at vi er på denne siden. Be quiet. Vær stille. They'll never know. De kommer aldri til å vite det. Trust me, Jesus. That's not happening. Stol på meg, Jesus. Det kommer ikke til å skje. But. Men. Because you say so. Siden du sier det. We will. Så gjør vi det. Because you say so. Siden du sier det. We will. Så gjør vi det. And so Peter's like, "Come on, guys!" And they're like, "Peter, this is crazy!" And they say, "Peter, that I gals." And they raise the nets up. And they tie up the garments. And then their fisherman buddies back at shore. And they see that the fisherman went on there. Peter, Peter, what? Shout it out really loud. Yeah, okay, really. Come on, go. Okay, Peter. Peter! Peter! <laughs> you think there's fish on the other side of the boat? Tror du det? Fisk på andre siden av båten? <laughs> Are you crazy? Are you gal? And Peter's like, yes, yes I am. Oh, Peter says, ja, jeg er det. But he drops the nets. Men han slipper ned garnet. You guys know what happened, right? Dere vet hva som skjer. All of a sudden, his nets 
fill with fish. Plötsligt är gårdarna fulla av fisk. This is crazy what Dette Jesus er is asking galskap. them to do. Det er Jesus ber dem om å gjøre. This is insane. It Dette makes no sense. Fullstendig galskap. Det gir ingen mening. And they drop their nets on the other side. Og de slipper gårdene ned på andre siden. And Peter's like, Hurra! Hurra! Og Peter bare, Hæ? We have fish! Vi har fisk. He's like, pull that net up! Ta, ta They're opp de gårdene. They're pulling the net up. De drar Fill opp gårdene. Drop it down again! Slipp den ned igjen. They drop it down again. De drar den ned igjen. It's full of fish again! Det er fullt av fisk igjen. Pull it up! De drar det opp igjen. They pull it up! De drar det opp. All of a sudden, they're filling the boat full of fish! Plutselig er båten helt stopp full av fisk. Peter realizes he's got another boat back at shore. Og Peter forstår, han har jo en båt til. Forstår Peter's like, hey! Get that boat out of here! We got fish! Hey, får ut den båten, vi har fisk. And then all of a sudden, all of the all of the other friends of Peter. Og plutselig så kommer alle vennene til Peter. They're back at shore. De er på stranda. And they're like, crazy Peter was right. Og de sier, gale Peter var hadde jo rett. We had our nets on the wrong side of the boat the whole time. Vi har hatt garna på feil siden av båten hele tiden. And they're all rowing out there. Og de roer alle sammen ut. And Peter's like, no! Put an X on it. Send Chris on That's the right side of the boat. Right side of the boat. This is crazy. That golf cup. Do you realize this makes no sense whatsoever? Could God have just made the fish go to the other side of the boat? Could he? Could he have? He could have gone to the other side of the boat. Could he have? He could have. What was Jesus after? What was Jesus after? Because you say so, we will. Fordi du sier det, så gjør vi det. The Bible says both boats barely make it back to shore. Vi vil si at begge båtene klarte bare å komme tilbake til stranden. They barely get back to shore. They're so full of fish. Fordi det er så full av fisk. And the Bible says that Peter gets out of the boat. Og vi vil si at Peter går ut av båten. And he drops to the ground in front of Jesus. Og han faller ned på bakken foran Jesus. Because Peter realized. Fordi Peter forsto. That it wasn't his skill as a fisherman. At det var ikke fordi han var så dyktig som fisker. Peter's standing there going, I know how to catch fish. Peter står der, han vet, jeg vet hvordan man får fisk. My skill and my ability caught me nothing. Min dyktighet ga meg ingenting. What was the difference? Hva var forskjellen? The presence that was on the boat. Tilstedeværelsen som var på båten. Peter realized his ability got nowhere. Peter forsto at hans evner ikke fikk han noe sted seg. But the presence on the boat made all the difference. Men tilstedeværelsen på båten, det gjorde hele forskjellen. And Peter gets out of the boat and he drops to his knees. Peter går ut av båten og han faller ned på kne. And he says, Jesus. Så sier han, Jesus. You're too good. Du er for god. I'm too bad. Jeg er for dårlig. To be this close to you. For å være så nær deg. The best thing for you and me. Det beste for deg og meg. It's for you just to go away right now. Er at du går bort akkurat nå. The best thing for you to do is just go further away from me. Det beste du kan gjøre nå er å bare gå vekk fra meg. You stay this close to me. Hvis du er så nær med meg. I'll disappoint you. Så kommer jeg til å skuffe deg. I disappoint everybody. Jeg skuffer alle. Yeah, the best thing, Jesus, just go now. Det beste er om du bare går nå. Just go away from me now. Bare gå bort. And Jesus looks at Peter. Og Jesus ser på Peter. And he says, oh, Peter. Han sier, oh, Peter. He said, you've been going for little fish your whole life. life. But I didn't make you for fish. I made you to catch people. Not fish. What did Peter want? Fish. What did Jesus give him? Fish. Fisk. And Jesus looks at him and he says something very profound. He says, hey Peter. Hey Peter. Follow me. Follow me. Have you ever noticed there's not much of an invitation in that? Har du noen gang lagt merke til at det er ikke mye invitasjon der? There's no big message in that. Det er ikke et stort budskap. He just goes up to Matthew. Han bare går opp til Matteus for eksempel. Matthew's got a table full of money. Matteus har et bord full av penger. He says, hey Matthew. Han sier, hey Matteus. Follow me. Follow me. The Bible says Matthew abandons his table, probably full of money. Og Bibelen sier at Matteus gikk fra bordet sitt, som han sannsynlig var fullt av penger. And just follows Jesus. Bare følger etter Jesus. And when Jesus says this to Peter, he says, hey Peter, follow me. Hei Peter, følg meg. Peter looks at him. Så ser Peter på ham. He gets up. Han reiser seg. And the Bible says, Og Bibelen sier, He forsakes the boat, the net, the fish. Gikk fra båten, garna og fisken. Those fish that he had been probably praying for all night 
long den fisk som han hade bett för hela natten igenom sannsynligtvis he just walks away han bara from to follow jesus for jesus what did peter want vad var det peter ville fish han ville ha fisk what did jesus want vad var det jesus ville because you say so för det du säger det we will så gör vi det even when it doesn't make sense selv når det ikke gir noen mening even when it doesn't add up selv når det ikke uh, går opp even when we're going to look foolish selv når det får oss til å se dumme ut but just simply because you say so bare fordi du sier det we will så gjør vi det let me tell you something la meg si deg en ting can you imagine these guys walking past their family members kan du tenke deg når disse gikk forbi familiene and then going excuse me og de bare unnskyld where are you going hvor skal dere I'm following him. Efter det. To do what? For å gjøre hva da? He didn't say. Han sa ikke noe om det. <laughs> How long are you going to do this? Hvor lenge skal du holde på med det? He didn't say that either. Han sa ikke det heller. Then why are you doing it? Hvorfor gjør du det? Because everything inside of me says, I need to follow the presence. For det alt inne mig säger att jag måste följa no till matter what I look like or what anyone thinks ut, of me. Eller vad det kräver av mig. I need to be in hot pursuit of what he carries. Så må jag följa efter det som han har. And that's all that matters. Det allt som betyder nå. Let me tell you something. Låt mig fortälla en ting. When Jesus looked at Peter, when Jesus saw Peter and said, "Peter, will you lend me your boat?" Og sa at Peter kan du låne båten din til meg? That boat represented Peter's life. Så det representerte den båten Peters liv. And Jesus was looking at Peter. Og Jesus så på Peter. And he was saying, "If you'll lend me your boat." Han sa, "Hvis du låner meg båten din." If you'll lend me your life. Hvis du låner meg livet ditt. And you let me put my presence on it. Og du lar meg putte min tilstedeværelse på. I'll do far more with it than you have ever done. Så kan jeg gjøre mye mer med den enn du har noensinne gjort. I'll do far more with it than you could ever do. Jeg kan gjøre mye mer med det enn du noen gang klarer å gjøre. And that picture og det bildet of them going fishing that day av de som drev seg ut og fisket den dagen was a prophetic picture og et profetisk bilde that would be fulfilled som skulle bli oppfylt i Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. Ja, det er gjerninger 2 på Pinsedagen. When Peter stood up, da Peter reiste seg, and thousands came forward. Og tusen mennesker kom frem. Tusenvis. Those fish represented those people. Disse fiskene representerte disse menneskene. That would come som ville komme at the sound of the presence. Som når de hørte Guds tilstede. At the experience of the presence. Når de kjente nærværet. Will we lend him our boat? Vil vi låne han båten vår? One day in my church. En dag i menigheten min. Every year we do a, a talk on sex. En, hvert år så snakker vi om sex. And I do a two week, uh, a, you know, two part series on it. Jeg har en sånn to deler serie. And uh, the, to sum up the talk. For å oppsummere talen. It's uh, sex is God's plan. Så er det at sex er Guds plan. Between a man and a woman in Mellom marriage. Mellom en mann og kvinne i ekteskap. Anything outside of that being God's plan, Alt utom det, God eh, doesn't bless. Eh, vil ikke Gud vil signe. But God blesses His plan. Men Gud vil signe sin plan. And so, if, if to do anything outside of God's plan is to break God's heart. Og gjøre noe utenfor eh, Guds plan er å knuse Guds hjerte. And we had this guy who was a part of this gang in the Latin Kings. Og vi hadde en fyr som hadde vært en del av denne gjengen som het Latin Kings. His street name was Hitler. Uh, gatenavnet hans var Hitler. And uh, he, he had never come to our church, but his girlfriend, uh, who he'd lived with for many years, was coming to our church. Han hadde aldri, aldri vært i menigheten vår, men kjæresten hans, som han bodde sammen med, kom til menigheten vår. And so she had heard part one of this message. Og hun hadde hørt del en av dette budskapet. And so she goes home to Hitler. Hun drar hjem til Hitler. <laughs> That's his name. Det var det han hans. And she says, I'm not having sex with you anymore. Og hun sa, jeg skal ikke ha sex med deg noe mer. Because Robbie said, for <laughs> Robbie saw, sex outside of marriage is sin. Sex is in fact skapa sin, and it breaks God's heart. Og det knuser Guds hjerte. And I'm not going to break God's heart. Og jeg vil ikke knuse Guds hjerte. Now you can imagine what happened. Du kan tænke dig hvad som skete. All of a sudden, this warmth came over Hitler. Plutselig kom den her varmen over Hitler. Tears started streaming down his face. Kom det tårer ned over hans ansigt nat. And he said, "I love Robbie." Og han må sige, "Ja, jeg elsker Robbie." Let's do whatever that man says. Lad os gøre alt som han siger. He's right. Han har sikkert rett. It's not exactly what happened. Det var ikke akkurat som det skjedde. 
He looks at her and Han he goes, now, you go tell that preacher han sa, go si I am kyrkan, coming to his church next Sunday att jag kommer till kyrkan nästa söndag. And if he doesn't take it back och vi sannolikt tar det tillbaka. If he doesn't say he was wrong vi sannolikt ser att han tog fel. He says I'm going to sit on the front row så ska jag sitta på första rad. And he said I'm going to pop him in the head in front of the whole church. Så ska jag skjuta han i huvudet på honom in the head. Föran hela menigheten. He said I'll kill him. Jag kan döda han. And he says you go tell him that. Gå och fortell honom det du. She calls me on the phone. She was crying. Hon ringer mig på telefonen och hon säger hon gråter. And she was saying, "Please, you can't get up and preach next Sunday. You can't do part two. You you can't do that." Hon sa du må du må inte förkynna del två av den serien. And she told me she goes, "Robbie, he's a killer. He'll do it." Hon sa, "Robbie, han är en drapsman. Han kan göra det." And she goes, "Please don't get up there." Du är så snäll inte gör det. She said, "Have Carlos, the the worship pastor, get up and preach instead." I was like, "So he he gets shot in the head instead of me." So how does it instead of my? Well, I got. And I said, "No, we're going to leave everything the same." Nej, vi ska göra akkurat så på samma måten. I said he's just he's just angry. He's han är just sint. you know just saying things because he's mad. Han säger ting för att han är sint. I said he he probably won't even come. Don't han worry. Han kommer säkert ingång. And she goes, yes he will. Jo, han kommer. Sier. And she goes, please don't get up there. Uh, and, said, and I said, no, don't worry, we'll be Vær fine. Slapp, det går, I said he's not bra. even going to show up. Han kommer inte ingång. So that next Sunday, nästa söndag, our, our worship pastor comes running up to my office. Så kommer Lars en stedan löpande till kontoret mitt. And his eyes were like this big. Han hade så stora ögon. And because he had been in that same gang. Han hade varit i den gängen. And he says, Robbie. Och han säger, Robbie. He goes, Hitler's here. Hitler är här. And he's strapping. He's. Uh, oh, han har vapen. He's carrying a gun. Mm. And he said, uh, he says, he goes, please, you know, tell, don't tell me you want me to disarm him to take uh, his gun away. Var så snäll och inte säg att du säger att jag ska ta bort pistolen. And I said, no. I said, you know, just leave him alone. I said. Jag sa bara slappa låt vara. I said, but here's the deal. I said, tell the person doing announcements. They're not doing announcements. I'm going to do the announcements. Men men sitter han som ska ha upplysningarna att jag ska ta det. And Carlos said, do you want to do worship too? Carlos sa, vill du ta lovsången också? And I was like, no, you're <laughs> doing worship. Nej, du kan inte ta lovsången. And so I got down there, and so. Jag um, kom ner dit. So I got up uh, to do the announcements. Och jag skulle ha dessa praktiska Now I have to be honest, my voice was, you know, I wasn't like, you know, really super confident. Jag var inte väldigt självsäker på det. Welcome to the vineyard. Welcome to the vineyard. So good to have you here today. So glad that. And I was moving a little bit faster, you know. Jag var lite snabbt fram och tillbaka. So the restrooms over here, children's ministry there. We're going to have after church, have a greeting, you get coffee, donuts. What he said. If he was going to take a shot, he was going to have to be fast. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's actually really true. I was <laughs> But I kept watching him the whole time. And so, and he, and it was really weird because I would move back and forth, and he would just sit there, and he was like this. And his eyes never moved. His head never moved. I go from this side to this side, and he just be like. He never, his eyes never moved. And I was like, "What's going on?" And so I, I finished preaching, and I did part two. And so at the end, we called for ministry. And, and people started coming up, and I kept watching him. And all of a sudden, I saw him get up, and he goes. And he just quietly gets up and he leaves. Och så bara reser han sig stilla upp och så går han. And I was like, what was going on? Och jag bara, vad var det som skedde? And so later that evening, så senare den kvällen, Elena, the, the, his girlfriend, called me. Så kommer kärsten hans, han, hon ringer mig. And she says to me, she goes, what happened? Och hon säger, vad var det som skedde? Because she was too scared to come to church. För hon var för rädd att komma till kyrkan. And I said, I don't know. Och jag sa, jag vet inte. I said he was sat there the whole time. His head was turned aside. He said he, it was really weird. He never moved. Han satt där hela tiden, han hade på skacke, men han bevegde sig aldrig. And I said, what did he tell you? Vad sa han till dig? And she goes, he won't talk about it. Han vill inte snacka om det sedan. He says whenever I ask him about it, he goes, he goes, I don't want to talk about it. När jag spör så säger han bara, jag vill inte snacka om det. He goes, that place is weird. Det stället är det rart. And she said, that's all he says. Och det är allt han säger. Well, about two or three months passed. Det gick två tre månader. And the police in my city, they arrested 23 of the top Latin kings throughout the Chicago area. Så arresterade politiet 23 av dessa toppledarna i den här gängen. And Hitler was the number one guy they were after. Hitler var nummer en av de de var efter. They had six 
charges of murder against him. De hade sex draps eh, anklager mot han. And so his brother is a drug dealer that also goes to our church. Brorna hans eh, er en narkolanger som også er i menigheten vår. And so I told him I said I said listen I said you go I said you get word to your brother that I'm coming to see him. Og jeg sa til han, eh, gi beskjed til broren din at jeg vil komme og besøke ham. And he told me, he goes, they're, they're in complete isolation. He goes, I can't get word to him. Men de, han sa, de er fullstendig isolert, så jeg kan ikke gi noe And beskjed. And I said, don't lie to me. I said, you tell him I'm coming to see him on Thursday. Uh, ikke lyde til meg, sa jeg. Fortell ham at jeg kommer til på torsdag og besøker ham. And he said, okay. He goes, I'll make sure he finds out. Ok, jeg skal finne ut en måte. And so I went to the prison that next Thursday. Så jeg gikk til tors- neste torsdag, så gikk han til fengselet. And they brought him in the room, and his hands were cuffed. You know, he had the chains on his hands and the chains on his feet. Og de tog han inn i rommet, han hadde um, håndhjern på føttene og fothjern på beina. And I've never seen anybody so angry in my entire life. Jeg har aldri sett noen så sint i hele mitt liv. I mean, he came in, and, uh, you know, when they came walking in, he was just, I mean, you could see this fury all over him. Når han kom inn, så kunne du bare se den rasende gløden over hele ham. And he sits down and he looks at me and he goes, "What do you want?" Han sitter så ned og han ser på meg og så sier han, "Hva vil du?" And I said, "Well, I want to talk to you." Jeg vil snakke med deg. And he goes, "Well, I got a question for you." Nei, jeg har et spørsmål til deg. And I said, "What's that?" Hva er det? Sa jeg. He goes, "What did you do to me that day I came to your church?" Hva gjorde du med meg den dagen som jeg kom til menigheten din? I said, "What are you talking about?" Jeg sier, "Hva snakker du om?" He goes, "As soon as I sat down in that seat, I was frozen and I couldn't move." For me, jeg satte meg ned på det setet, så var det frossen fast, og jeg kunne ikke bevege meg. He said, "I was going to pop you in the head in front of the whole church." Jeg skulle skyte dig i hodet foran hele menigheten. And he says, "I couldn't move." Men jeg klarte ikke å bevege meg. He said, "My nose was just in the whole time, and I couldn't scratch it." <laughs> Nesa, vi klødde hele det møtet, men jeg klarte ikke å klø meg. And I looked at him and I said. Jeg så på ham, jeg I said, sa, I didn't do anything to you. Jeg gjorde ingenting med deg. He goes, did you hex me or something? Vet du hva hekset du meg eller sånn? And I said, no. I said, that was God keeping you from doing something stupid. Nei, sa jeg, det var Gud som forhindret deg for å gjøre noe dumt. And I just started using really basic street terms to talk to him. Jeg begynte å bruke helt sånn vanlig gatespråk. And I said, Hitler, here's the deal. Så sa jeg, Hitler, det her er greia. I said, you've made this life for yourself. Du har skapt dette livet til deg, sier du. And it's all jacked up and all, are all broken and messed Alt er knust og, og, og rota til. And I said it's all twisted and all, you know, it's not working right. Og det funker ikke bra. And I said it's ended up you being here in this prison. Og det ender opp med at du er her på dette fengselet. And I said but on the table that's that's what you've made for yourself. Men på bordet det der du har det er det du har skapt til deg selv. I said but across the table Jesus has this perfect life that he made you for. Men på andre siden av bordet så har Jesus et perfekt liv som han har skapt deg til. And you've never lived it. Og du har aldri prøvd å leve det. Because you've settled for this jacked up life. Fordi du har nøyd deg med det livet som du har rotet til. And I said here's what Jesus is offering to you. Og jeg sa det her er det Jesus tilbyr deg. He's gonna take the messed up bro broken life that you've made han ska han kan ta det ödelagda livet som du har skapat trading you with the life that you were meant for han byter det med det livet som du, du har blivit skapad till and he's like will you do you want to take the deal och jag frågar vill du ha den deal and i explained a little bit more about the gospel to him och jag förklarade lite mer om evangeliet till honom and he looked at me and he just pushed away from the table och han sa åt mig han bara dytte sig bort från bordet and he goes that deal's not for me och så sa han den avtalen där den är inte för mig He goes, that deals for people like you and Billy Graham and Mother Teresa. Det der er folk, for folk som deg og Billy Graham og Bill, uh, uh, Mor Teresa. He goes, Robbie, he goes, you don't understand. I've gone too far. For Robbie, du forstår ikke. Jeg har gått alt for langt. He goes, he goes, six murders. He goes, they think they know. He goes, that's not even half of what I've done. De seks drapsanklagene, det er bare halvparten av hva jeg har gjort. And I looked at him and I said, I know what you're thinking, Hitler. Og jeg sa, jeg vet hva du tenker, Hitler. And I grabbed my Bible and I said, Hitler, listen to me. Jeg tok Bibelen, og så sa jeg, I said, we call this the holy word of God. Vi kaller dette det hellige Guds ord. And I said, half of this portion Halve denne delen is the New Testament. This er, is the New Testament. Testament. And I said, half of this Halve was written dette. by a murderer ble skrevet av en murder. who was murdering God's own people. Som drepte Guds egen folk. And God chose him to write what we call the holy word. Word of God. Og Gud valgte ham til å skrive det vi kaller det hellige Guds ord. And I said, a matter of fact, the first five books of this whole Bible was written for, by a murderer. Og de første fem bøkene i denne boken var også skrevet av en murder. And I said, God chose him. Og Gud valgte ham. To write. For å skrive. What we hear his voice through. Det vi hører hans røst gjennom. And I gjennom. said, Hitler. Og Hitler. The deal is still on the table. Den avtalen er fortsatt på bordet. Will you take the deal? Tar du den? 
and he just dropped his head and he began to cry. His brother told me later, he says, Robbie, I've never seen my brother cry. He said, I saw my stepfather beat my brother when he was six years old till he was almost dead. And he said, he never shed one tear. He said, I've never seen my brother cry his entire life. And he said, and I've never seen him laugh either. And I saw this man just drop his head and he began to cry. And he, he said, said, Robbie, I'll take the deal. And said, Robbie, I'll take the deal. And right there we prayed and I saw this man just give his life to Jesus. And it was the most amazing encounter. When he lifted up his head from this prayer, a huge smile came across his face. And he just started giggling like a child. And he just started rolling his shoulders. And he said, it's gone. He said, it's gone. It's all gone. He goes, my hatred my shame, my rage. He said it was like a big boulder strapped to my back. Rock. And he said it just like snapped right off. He said when I said that prayer, I mean it was like right out of the book Pilgrim's Progress. I mean it sounded, he said those exact words. And he just began to laugh. And then the guard came in the room and said, "All right, time to come back to your cell." Så sa vakten, "Kom igjen, det er på tide å gå tilbake til cellen." And Hitler jumped up and he goes, "Yes, sir." Og Hitler bare reiste seg og sa, "Ja, vel." And the guard's like, looking at me like, "What did you do?" Hva i all verden har du gjort, mann? Jeg bare... And so he took him back to his cell. Så han tok han tilbake til cellen. I would go meet with him every week and I would take my Bible. Jeg gikk og møtte han hver uke, og jeg tok med meg Bibelen min. And he could barely read, so he had a children's picture Bible, and he would just look at pictures, because he could hardly read at all. Han kunne knapt lese, men jeg hadde en barnebibel med bilder som han kunne. And we would talk about the stories in the Bible, we would talk about forgiveness. Vi snakket om historien i Bibelen, vi snakket om tilgivelse. We would talk about trusting Jesus, not trusting what we think. Jesus, og ikke bare det vi tror på. And for weeks and weeks, I would sit there, and I would mentor him and disciple him. Og i uke etter uke, så begynte jeg å mentorere han og disiplere han. Well, months had passed, and one day we were sitting there together. Etter noen måneder så satt vi der sammen. And he's sitting there holding this little children's picture Bible. Og han sitter der og holder en barnebibel. And he just looks up at me and he says, Robbie. Og han kikker opp på meg, så sier han Robbie. And I said, yeah. Jeg sier ja. And he said, I gotta get my story out. Jeg må få ut historien min. He said, Robbie. Robbie. People don't know how far Jesus will go. Folk vet ikke hvor langt Jesus kan gå. He said, they don't know how far he'll go for them. De vet ikke hvor langt han kan gå etter dem. He goes, they don't know that you can do some of the worst things in the entire world. Fordi han vet ikke at jeg har gjort noen av de verste tingene i hele verden. And he just doesn't quit. He just keeps coming after you. Han gir seg ikke. Han bare fortsetter å komme etter deg. He says he'll even send the guy that you wanted to kill. Han kan til og med ta den fyren som ville drepe deg. To come and tell you the greatest news you've ever heard. Som du ville drepe til å fortelle de beste nyhetene som du noen gang har hørt. He said, people don't know that. And I looked at him and I said, Hitler, I said, dude, I love you. I said, but here's the thing. I said, I don't want you to share your story and that get you shot by the kings, by the Latin kings. And I said, and the other thing is, is I don't want you to get the needle. I don't want you to get lethal injection. Because if you tell everything, that could get you killed. For if you tell everything, you could maybe be killed. You know what he said to me? Vet du hva han sa til meg? He held up that little children's picture Bible. Han holdt opp den lille barnebibelen. And he said, you told me this was worth dying for. Du sa at denne her er verdt å dø for. He said, you told me they all died for this. Du sier jo at alle disse er døde for dette. And he goes, and now you're going to tell me I should try to save my own life? Og nå sier du at jeg skal prøve å redde mitt eget liv? He said, listen to me. He goes, the past few months in this stinking rotten prison have been the best months of my entire life. Disse siste månedene i dette forferdelige fengselet har vært de beste månedene i mitt liv. He said, if they took me out today, it was worth every one of them. Hvis de drepte meg i dag, så hadde det vært verdt hver eneste dag. And he said, you told me this was worth dying for. Du sa at dette var verdt å dø for. And I looked at him, I said, dude, you get it. Og jeg sa, du har forstått det. 
I wish the church would get it like that. I wish we as the church would really buy into it like that murderer bought into it. Like Paul bought into it. That we would just say this is worth giving everything for. Will you lend him your boat? Will you give 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 him your boat when it doesn't matter what you look like? Will you give him your boat when it doesn't matter what you look like? Will you give him your boat when you may look foolish? Will you give him your boat when you may look foolish? Will you give him your boat when you may look Will you give him your boat when you could die for it? Will you give him your boat when you can die for it? Will we just give him our boat? Will you buy him your boat? Father, I pray. Father, I pray. By your Spirit, Lord. Med din helige ånd. That this would just sink deep into our hearts. Att det bara sinker djupt in i hjärtan våra. That we would hear your voice. Att vi hör din stämma. Hear your call. Hör ditt kall. Just to release everything to you. Och att bara ge allt till dig. Father, do not care what we look like. Att vi inte ska bry oss om hur vi ser ut. To not care what people think of us. Att vi inte bry oss om hur vad folk tror om oss. To not care. Att vi inte bry oss. Lord, what this could cost us. Om vad det vi kostar oss. But to realize. Men att förstå. You deserve it all. Att du förtjänar allt. For some of you, the Lord's been speaking to you in this message. For noen av deg har dette betalt spesielt til deg. And you feel like that you've been holding back some things. Du føler at du har holdt igjen litt. You could be a pastor. Du kan være en pastor. But you, do, you could be walking with God for 50 years. Du kan ha gått med Gud i 50 år. But you hear God's challenge. Men du hører Guds utfordring. And if you're just willing just to give him your boat. Og hvis du er villig nå til å gi ham båten din. Just stand if you would right Så now. Så bare stå I see enough courage in this room standing. Jeg ser nok mot her stående her. That could change this nation. Til å forandre denne nasjonen. Come Holy Spirit. Kom her, ja. Fill us. Fill us. Empower your people. Gi kraft til ditt folk. Holy Spirit, fill these boats. Hellig ånd, fyll disse båtene. Fill them with your presence. Fill them with your nightmare. Fill every part. Fill all the area. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. We present our boats to you. We present our we give our all, all of our lives to you. All the live, all the lives of our lives now to you. Let's just all stand if we would. Let us all stand and rest us. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill this place. Fill it as there. Fill each one. Fill that also. Let the weight of your presence just rest on our lives right here, right now. La vekten av ditt nærvær bare hvile på livene våre akkurat her nå. Ruin us with your presence. Bare knus oss med din tilstedeværelse. Kom, Holy Spirit. Kom, Helia. La oss bare vente. Sam, would you and the guys come back up here, please? It's more, Lord. 